Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to do part five of FlexPress, and we're going to treat the repeater component. Now, the repeater component is so cool. It's going to allow us to bring in visual components and load in those visual components the data that we grabbed last time in parts three and four from the XML. So here are the ABCs of a repeater component. A. The repeater component loops through in an array collection and dynamically creates visual components for each item within the array collection. B. The repeater is a non-visual control that wraps around and generates instances of visual controls and has a property called data provider, which you set to an array collection containing the data that you want to loop through. And C. The repeater has a current item property, which refers to each item that you are looping through in the array collection and can use extended dot syntax. Now, that is cool to refer to the other properties in your array collection. So, we're actually going to bring in this repeater and grab that XML data, and we can yank any of the elements from the XML array that we want using the current item property. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, first thing we want to do is a little bit of housekeeping. Let's go up to our uh, application tag and set our absolute layout to vertical. And I'm going to do this to center whatever I put on the stage. And I'm going to put everything I put on the stage, I'm going to put inside a canvas. So let's create a canvas component. And now we're ready to start bringing items into the stage. So let's go to design view. So we're back in the design view. We're going to get our canvas ready. So let's stretch it down a little bit. We've got a lot of work to do here. We're going to fit the window to a 1024 by 768 and stretch our canvas out a little bit more. There you go. And I want to bring in a, a panel. And let's stretch out a little bit. And within that panel, I'm going to bring out a text area component. So just drag it on the stage. Here's my text area. And we're going to drag that out. And we're actually going to put our post right in that panel. And just above that panel, let's go ahead and put in a label. So let's drag a label above it. And we'll call this post. There you go. Let's make it a little bit bold. Bring out the flex properties and uh, make it bold and increase the size a little bit. There we go. Let's move our panel down just a little bit. And so we have something to work with. Okay, we're back in the source view. Let's double click it to open it up a little bit. There we go. And we're going to apply the ABCs of repeaters. Let's take a look at those real quick. And what we're going to concentrate on are rules B and C. Rule B, the repeater is a non-visual control that wraps around and generates instances of visual controls and has a property called data provider, which you set to an array collection containing the data you want to loop through. Let's apply that right now. We have a visual component, the text area component right here that we would generate it by dragging it onto stage. And we're going to wrap it with a repeater so we can repeat it over and over again. So let's put in a repeater component, mx colon repeater, and there's our code heading. Let's give it an ID, and we'll call it my repeater. And now we're going to set the data provider. What is the data provider? Well, we created it earlier in the last tutorial. It's called w post, my WP post, but we need to make it bindable. We do that using square brackets and the word bindable. And this is a really cool device in Adobe Flex. There you go. I'll spell it right eventually. It's a cool device because it allows us to stick our hooks into the database. So now we have that bindable expression. Let's grab that array collection name, my WP post, and let's paste that into the data provider of our repeater. So let's go back down to our repeater and paste that in as a data provider. But one important thing we need to do is enclose that in curly brackets. And many times when you see that curly brackets, it means that that's a bindable expression. Not always. It's, they're used for other things as well. But in this case, definitely a bindable expression. Let's close it with our greater than sign. We get our uh, closing tag. Going to use our highlight and alt arrow down to sandwich that text area. Now what we want to do is bring in the XML data 
from the data provider. So let's start by creating an HTML text tag because we're going to bring in the post information and that's XML formatted or that's HTML formatted. So we've got that and now we're going to bring in the my repeater. We're going to refer to the ID of the repeater dot current item and now we can refer to the actual node of the XML data. And this is so cool because in the olden days we're using all the child notation and now we can refer to the node directly and bring that data in and the name of the node that we're looking for is the post content which is post underscore content. Let's just copy that and let's paste it in right here and once again this also needs to be in curly brackets because it involves that bindable expression and now that we've done that we're going to run this and see what we get well there we go we have our first element here but yet we have another scroll bar here and that's all the post items right now coming up on my screen so I'm pulling in all that data all that post data without even writing a single line of PHP code isn't that super cool